Fulwell is an odd little place in south-west London, lying between Twickenham, Teddington, Witton and Hampton. Sometimes it's considered to be part of Twickenham or Teddington, and it's often lumped in with Hampton Hill. Generally, it's your standard residential south-west London suburb. It's not the sort of place where you'd expect to find, say, the King of Portugal. And yet, for just under 20 years, King Manuel II made this his stomping grounds. A little historical context. It might seem weird to put a royal residence in Fulwell now, but for centuries the borough of Richmond-upon-Thames has been well known for its palaces and stately homes. In fact, Richmond itself takes its name from Richmond Palace, which King Henry VII named after his estate in Yorkshire. As well as Richmond Palace, there's Hampton Court Palace. George II's mistress, Henrietta Howard, lived at Marble Hill House. Louis-Philippe I, the Duke d'Orléans, and last King of France, gave his title, in anglicised form, to Orléans House. Ham House was built by the Elizabethan courtier, Tom Vavasour. Before the coming of the railways, Richmond and Twickenham were good places to put your country retreat, being on the river, and therefore within easy reach of Westminster and the City of London. From the 17th century, Fulwell could boast its own stately home, in the form of Fulwell Lodge. Fulwell at the time was out in the sticks, and so the lodge boasted extensive grounds. It was bought by the property developer Sir Charles Freak in 1871, who decided to get his freak on by redeveloping the grounds. The property later passed to Freak's widow, and was then sold to Count Reginald Ward. Ward doesn't seem to have been particularly interested in residing at Fulwell, and in 1913 he sold it to its most illustrious occupant, King Manuel II. Manuel Maria Felipe Carlos Amelio Luis Miguel Rafael Gabriel Gonzaga Francisco de Anis Eugenio de Saxe-Coburgo Gotha a Bragantia, also known as Manuel II, also known as Manuel the Patriot, also known as Manuel the Unfortunate, did not expect to be King of Portugal. I mean, most people don't. I certainly wouldn't. Manuel was the third child and second son of King Carlos I, so he didn't stand to inherit the throne. He was more like a backup heir if anything went wrong. Unfortunately, in 1908, something did. There had been an increasingly vocal republican movement in Portugal. The government was highly inefficient, riven by factionalism and hampered by corruption. The exact details are very complicated, but suffice it to say that Carlos came to be viewed as repressive, unsympathetic and self-serving, a figurehead for the whole mess. His political opponents called him a highwayman in a mantle and a crown, and a royal criminal. Afonso Costa, a high-ranking Republican, ominously stated, For less than Dom Carlos has done, the head of Louis XVI fell. On the 1st of February 1908, at a time of high political tension, the king decided to take a tour around Lisbon in an open carriage to see his people. With him in the carriage were the Queen, Amelia, the Prince Royal, Louis Felipe, and the young Prince Manuel. As the carriage crossed the Torero de Paso, the assassins struck. The king was shot in the neck. Louis Felipe tried to fight back with a revolver, but was shot in the chest and the head, fatally wounded. Manuel was shot in the arm. The assassins themselves, Alfredo Luis da Costa and Manuel Reyes Buisa, were killed by the police. And so, under the most unfortunate circumstances, at the age of just 18, Manuel inherited the throne. He had his work cut out for him. Not only had he ascended at a time of unprecedented political turbulence, but he had no training in leadership. He sacked the unpopular Prime Minister Franco, who was behind many of the unpopular policies that had led to the tensions, stepped back from interfering in government, and attempted to become closer to his subjects. In many ways a modern monarch. Sadly, it wasn't enough. The government was still, frankly, an unstable and divided mess. On the 4th of October, revolution broke out. The royal family fled to Gibraltar, and then to Britain. 
Manuel had unsuccessfully sought to form links with the British monarchy during his brief period on the throne and was friends with King George V. He initially lived in Richmond, but following his marriage to Princess Augusta Victoria of Hohenzollern in 1912, he bought Fulwell Park. He actually had a familial connection to the area. His mother had been born at York House in Twickenham, which at the time was owned by the aforementioned Duke d'Orléans. He led a curious existence at Fulwell Park. Certainly he didn't intend to retire gracefully, not at the age of 24. He was a regular attendee at St. James's Church in Twickenham. He enjoyed playing golf and tennis. He went fishing in the River Crane and became the first president of the Twickenham Piscatorial Society. He dabbled as a historian and wrote a history of early Portuguese literature. He became godfather to several children. He was keenly interested in gardening and remodelled the grounds of Fulwell Park to look more Portuguese. He supported the Hampton Garden Society. One of his idiosyncrasies was an aversion to the colour blue, which he would not allow on the walls of his house. He became involved in local events such as parades and fates, and on the whole seems to have been quite a popular figure in the area. During the First World War, he worked for the British Red Cross and was behind the opening of the orthopaedic department at Shepherd's Bush Hospital. But he also remained an active Portuguese patriot, becoming involved in diplomatic relations between Britain and Portugal, and even seeking to reconcile with the Republicans. That didn't stop a would-be assassin from breaking into the grounds in 1931. There were a number of attempts to restore the monarchy, but oddly enough the king himself seemed largely uninterested. He even opposed revolution. Perhaps we might speculate because he'd witnessed the consequences of violent uprisings firsthand. On the 2nd of July 1932, he complained of a sore throat following a trip to watch the tennis at Wimbledon. This turned out to be a tracheal edema, which came on with remarkable, some argue suspicious, rapidity. That day, he passed away at the age of just 42. He left his fortune to the people of Portugal. His body was removed for a state funeral in Lisbon, but en route through Twickenham the streets were lined with mourners, less concerned with the loss of a beloved statesman than a popular local character. Queen Augusta did not remain in Fulwell long, and she sold the house in 1934 with the condition that it should never again be used as a private residence. It was sold to Edward Waits, a development company with little time for sentiment. The house was demolished and the area was built over with a lot of identical houses. These days there is little remaining to indicate that there was ever a royal residence here, apart from a few street names and the golf courses of Strawberry Hill and Fulwell. There is one curious postscriptum to all this. After Augusta sold the house, she moved back to her family's estates in Germany. There, she had a new palace built, in the English style. She named this palace Fulwell Park. So, while the London suburb might be little known or even disregarded, there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever Fulwell. Good evening. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode, even if you've never heard of Fulwell. If you did, please do click the like button and consider subscribing for more. I actually grew up not very far from Fulwell, and I only recently found out about this story, so I couldn't resist making a video about it. I hope it wasn't too self-indulgent for you. Thanks, as always, to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon for supporting my nonsense. You are the pastel pink to my blueless stately home. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio!